This episode is sponsored by Rocket Money. Yo, it's the new year. And one thing I really want to focus on is all the ways we can save money. And you know what the easiest way is? To Canceling cancel subscriptions. subscriptions that you maybe don't even know that you're still subscribed to. Well, Rocket Money can put everything in one place and makes it super easy to cancel those subscriptions. So stop throwing your money away, cancel unwanted subscriptions, and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash stdty. That's rocketmoney.com slash stdty. Rocketmoney.com slash stdty. Hello, and welcome back to Shit They Don't Tell You. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everybody. Ding, ding, ding. It's 2023. Wow. I'm Nikki Limo, and this is my handsome, stunning mm. co host. Who are you today, Steve? Crypto Steve? King. Crypto King. Crypto, oh. crypto King. Yep. Can you figure it out? I'm, I don't know what's going on. We need a new arm over here. It's fine. <laughs> and Steve needs a new arm. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, how's, how's your new year been so far? Um. Uh, well, I got stuck at the airport, so that really sucked. <clears throat> yes, that happened. Yeah. Why is I that? Spend the night at the airport. Cause like, cause like, you call yourself the Miracle Man. I don't call myself the Miracle Man. It's something that people call me. And, and like when when I'm like stressing out because like we need to be at the airport a certain time, and yeah. I I tend to get told off by the Miracle Man that it's always going to happen and we're always going to make a plane. But then the well, when you're right ten thousand times and you're wrong one time, I guess you gotta you gotta face the music. <laughs> guess so. guess you can't always have miracles, huh? Well, I would have had a miracle if my Uber driver knew about the shortcut, but I he see. doesn't know about the LAX shortcut. Not That's, my fault. His which is fault. weird because him, like, me. Uber drivers probably go to the airport a lot. Like you should know about those. I think shortcuts. he was new. I know because I can't believe he didn't know about the shortcut. Because yeah. there's a shortcut in LAX where if you turn left, you can cut get to the other terminals. Traffic. Yes. Yeah, because there's a huge loop at LAX, and it's always just a it's cluster fucked. It's just not. It'll take you an hour to get through that loop. And the middle portion is all international ter- terminals, so they have like the domestics on the other on either side of each other. So they have this shortcut that skips you right through to the other domestic flights. And most Uber drivers know about it, but I guess this, not. This is one guy who didn't. It was crazy. Uh, so that 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 was fun. Spend the night at the airport. Had a great time. Was it your first time spending the night at the airport? It was. Yeah. How was how was the hospitality? It was really, really nice. I love how LAX plays really annoying oh music my God. all night long, no matter I can't what. Imagine. Did you have your headphones at least? I don't have headphones. What? Remember? I gave you my. I yeah. gave you headphones. And no, I remember what I told you. I said I don't know where they are, and I couldn't find them on Mexico trip. And so I come, I come home, I have to go to JK a day and a half later. Didn't find them then. So yeah, I had no noise canceling anything. I had to face the music. I would have bought. I had to face the music at the airport. They didn't have them. I looked everywhere. Wow. I had time. They didn't even have the vending machine. They didn't have the, the Best Buy machine or anything. What? No. I, not where I was. Well, you were in the really shitty area then. I was. American Airlines, you're dead to me. <laughs> Just so you know, you're dead to me. All right. Well, we are starting the new year off this episode, the first episode of the new year, by answering questions <coughs> from a you. Thank you for submitting your questions. If you have a question, you can always submit it to podcast at nikki.limo. That's podcast at N-I-K-K-I dot L-I-M-O. I am, uh, as always, going to start with any Patreon questions that have been submitted. You can check out our Patreon if you want to help our show even further. It's only five bucks a month, and there's so many other perks uh, that go along with it, including early episode releases to the show. Patreon.com slash Sticky, S-T-I-K-K-I. If you want to check it out, Steve does... Uh, Crypto at- Corner every Tuesday, baby. Yep. Every and Tuesday night at 7 p.m. PST. We do free roll poker tournaments. We also have a live uh, live stream, a monthly live stream. And there's an awesome Discord community. So come join us. Check it out. This first question is from a patron. I've been a long-time listener. I probably started watching when you were doing Tasty Tuesday. I stopped for a while because of a a toxic relationship I was in, but I'm back now and getting caught up on all amazing content. But what really caught my attention were the videos you did on books about financial health, like Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and I've listened to your podcasts on those topics. So I was wondering how you were able to employ what you've learned from those books into your own lives. I, oh, I don't know if it wants to be anonymous. Uh, She said, they said their name, but I don't know if they yeah, want we'll to. Yeah, we'll leave it anonymous. Okay. We'll just leave you anonymous because I'm not sure if this means you want to be anonymous or not. All right. So, uh, have, have you read Rich Dad Poor Dad? I have. Okay, cool. It's a great book. I Personally, that is one of the, I think, the most influential books on my adult life. I'm so happy that I read it when I was 18, like very early on in my adult life. It completely changed the course 
of where I thought my life was going. I really only thought there was one way to go, which was go to college, get a job, da, 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 work nine to five, no matter what, you know? Dreams are cool, starting businesses is cool, but that's like whatever, That's you're gonna go this one way. And reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad was like, there are actually, there's actually another way you can go. And this way is much more fruitful. It can, you can incorporate the way that you were originally gonna go if you're passionate about it. Um, but basically it changed my mindset in how I approach everything. I mean, pretty much everything. It is about finances and it's about um, an employee mindset versus an investor mindset. Uh, creating passive income using time and money leverage rather than your income directly correlating to your time spent which i thought was really interesting and nobody ever talks about that in school um but really like how investing works in a sense that you're putting in a lot more time and money in the beginning in uh, so that over time you are collecting money without putting very much time in it's like a chart that goes like this using your money to make money yeah exactly or using your uh time leverage to make to make money but um yeah i didn't i didn't realize that the world worked that way especially for the people who had figured it out the wealthy the business owners the investors and then there's a book called um think and grow rich by napoleon hill where he interviewed all the richest people in the world at the time um and they had very much this mindset yeah once you see the game for what it is it, you never go back, in my opinion. Yeah. Like once I started to see the world this way, because you know, in my early twenties, I was like very much a paycheck to paycheck kind of cat, uh, because you know, you that's what, that's just your life. And then um, because you work for your money, you want to enjoy your money, because you're basically spending all of it on rent and like yeah. on food. So you're like, I want to enjoy at least some of my paycheck. So I would do stupid shit with it, like buy DVDs or whatever. Like as a little dopamine hit, mm -hmm. like uh, at the end of my week, I would like go to Target or something. And, and and that's all well and good, as long as you're doing something for a reason. And I wasn't doing it for a good reason. I was doing it for a dopamine hit reason. Yeah. And once I understood that, I've never wanted to, spend money on stupid shit again yeah i i think it, it changed me in a way where my mindset approaching everything is i see everything in a a time and money investment rather than like a job you know like i think a lot of people see the world as like, like okay well i'll take this job for this pay but i approach every activity whether it's going on a trip uh, going to a social event going to uh um on a trip go uh investing in a new piece of equipment or whatever i don't see it as a like oh i'm buying a toy i see like how how can this help me create either more time or more money yes and is in fact, that that's how we talk to each money? other which is kind of cool yeah like we um you know even like going somewhere like nikki's going to la next week like we always talk about it like, oh, well, that's a good investment. Yes. You know, like we always talk about it like that. We don't say like, oh, that'll be fun. We mm -hmm. always say that's a good investment. And the fun is an added bonus. Maybe exactly. it's even a metric for like where I, you know, it's a, maybe like a factor in like whether or not I want to do it. But it's always in terms of the investment. What is it going to bring back to us? What do we get out of it in the long run? What is it growing it long term? Like and, and that might looking sound, down the road. That might sound small to, to just like change words around or whatever for people but it really is about enhancing that mindset it mm -hmm. reminds you about why you're doing what you're doing and where and helps you focus on the goal part the of main things. goals yeah, yeah. it, it kind of almost helps you recenter to what your what are your long-term goals does this help you achieve that you know is like sometimes it's like ooh, spending this amount of money here it's like oh it's kind of a pinch for us but i know that if we spend it now we can flourish later it's kind of like taking care of uh i mean your house is an investment right and when something breaks in your house like let's say like uh, half of the lights went out you know investing in fixing those lights actually adds value to your house you can't go if you were to put your house on the market right now with half your lights out it would sell for a little less than what you could have gotten if had you just fixed your lights and it could sell for a lot more than the cost of fixing your lights so it's a good investment yes. and that's how you look at things not just like my light's broken i need to fix it why do you need to fix it what does it do for you what it, what does it give you in return well i also really like to have light it, it enhances my um my way of life <laughs> you know to have light 
So there's there's that too, the joy aspect, the the energy aspect, giving you energy back. But yeah, I think that Robert Kiyosaki does a great job of breaking down the way that we've been programmed. Like, I don't know how else to call it. Like you're programmed in school to perceive your pa- life path a certain way. Mm-hmm. And unless you were born into a wealthy family or uh, a, a business-minded family, you aren't taught otherwise. Yeah. And I think for people who aren't taught otherwise, whereas the majority of us, uh, these type of books are really essential if you want to break out of that path, if that path that maybe isn't for you, or if you've been wondering like, huh, this really doesn't doesn't fulfill me and that sounds like kind of agonizing hell to do for the rest of my life. Is there another way? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it helps unlock that. So yeah, I would say that it has greatly impacted my life in ways that I don't even think about anymore. Me too. All right, cool question. Next question. Oh, this was back in set in November. Oops, my bad. How to communicate with my with boyfriend with ADHD and anxiety. Hi, Nikki and Steve. Before I begin, please keep me anonymous with a nickname, Jelly Belly, Jelly Belly 5. Okay, Jelly Belly 5. First and foremost, compliments. I love listening to your podcast, especially the ones on relationships. They give me insight into my own relationships and perspectives that I may not have previously thought or considered. I also find your relationship admirable and inspiring, and I really hope to find a relationship like what you guys have my, for myself one day. Aw. Thank you. Thank you. You're so sweet. We are fueled by your compliments. Yes, indeed. Now, on to my question. How do I better communicate with my boyfriend who has ADHD and anxiety? For the record, I'm an early 30s woman who has been with my boyfriend exclusively for about six months now. He is in his late 20s. Warning, this will be long. Okay, that's fine. We got time. Things have been wonderful for the most part. He's very affectionate and sweet. We have a similar sense of humor, similar interests, make each other laugh, and the sex is great. But I won't lie. It's been a tough six months. This is due to both of us still dealing with past traumas that haven't been properly addressed. Me with my abusive past relationship and neglectful abusive parents in my childhood, which possibly led me to be insecure, anxious, depressed, and him also having dealt with an absentee father and a demanding entitled mother during childhood and dealing with ADHD and anxiety. I've recently started therapy to address my insecurities and low self-esteem in the hopes that I can better myself. My boyfriend, however, doesn't seem too keen on therapy. In fact, the few times it's been brought up, he didn't want to talk about it or appeared very reluctant to take the steps necessary to start therapy. I honestly believe a good therapist could help him immensely, especially because I can sense the unresolved resentment he has towards his mom when he talks about her. Another reason I believe therapy could benefit him is it will help him be a better communicator with me during our conflicts. Due to his anxiety and the way his mom and family have acted, still act towards him at times, tendency to blame him for three things accuse him for of lying cold shouldering him acting entitled my boyfriend tends to shut down when i try to approach difficult topics the first instance this happened when i was asked him about a girl on ig who used to be his romantic interest i found it odd that they were still following each other especially since this girl was in a relationship with another guy when he, when she started pursuing my boyfriend his immediate reaction was to say i knew you'd say some shit about this and then compared me to his controlling ex which of course made me emotional seeing me cry he realized what he did and had a panic attack I didn't see it then, but I noticed that my boyfriend does this every time I question him slash want to talk about his intentions, overreacts, shuts down, doesn't want to talk, and has a panic attack. I try not to sound like I'm attacking him when I talk to him, but maybe he feels like I am. I have deep feelings for this man, but I am not sure how I'm supposed to communicate with him when he has a chain of reactions. I feel uneasy every time this happens, and due to my insecurities, I have mentioned breaking up a few times. But after realizing how much those words hurt him and how much he empathizes and wants to be with me, I have not brought it up again. So the next time I want to talk about something difficult or something that might be triggering for my boyfriend, how should I approach it? When he doesn't want to talk about it, should I respect his space until he's ready to talk? At the same time, I do want us to be able to communicate better, so just dropping the topic every time or sweeping things under the rug doesn't feel right to me. How do I communicate better with my boyfriend in a way that will feel safe and respectful for both of us? Sorry for the long email. It's as condensed as I can make it. Sending lots of love to both of you. In love and confused. Well, Jelly Belly 5. Okay. I think you're going to build a a lifetime of resentment with this man if you don't come up with the process for this. Mm -hmm. Um, It's really not okay for him to constantly basically be deflecting yeah um you, a relationship is, is a two-way street it should be an open book if he comes up to you and wants to ask you something mm-hmm. that should be okay just like you coming up to him and asking him something should be okay and you being afraid of a result because of a previous pattern yeah is already making you afraid to ask simple Absolutely. questions and that is a huge red flag for me 
I would consider getting out of this relationship. Yeah, and and the answer I knew you would bring up some shit like that. That's mm-hmm. what? That's very no. toxic. Yeah. yeah, I I don't like the like if he knew you would bring up stuff like that, then he already sees you as some villain. Exactly. That's like going to question him about something. Yeah, he absolutely has issues he needs to resolve a, a hundred percent with and it's therapy. It's not on you. It's and not all it's on you. It's not on you. I do want to clear up though that this has nothing to do with ADHD. Like these are other unreli- uh, un these are underlying issues. Um, ADHD is a neurological neurological disorder so it's uh, it's just a different way of thinking in your brain it's not all adhd people are like this or you know it's everyone's different it's just a different way that you car- compartmentalize and, and approach um, things in the world i don't i just don't want people to th- like see it as some like thing that can be cured it's not like not really a, a it's not a problem unless they're using it as an excuse which is yeah so just clearing that up um i yeah i think that he i don't know what to i don't know how to if i if you kept coming up to me and saying asking a question and then i have a panic attack yeah and then it makes you feel guilty for even asking absolutely no i don't know where you go Right, uh, and I think maybe I don't know if you've tried this al- or already, but having the discussion of I need to be able, I guess, tell him your needs. I need to be able to communicate concerns I have with our relationship without being scared of you shutting me down and ha- and and saying that you can't talk about it because of anxiety, because these issues never seem to. Get resolve. brought up again yes. when you're in a better, you know. I, if it sounds like you give him space, and then they still get swept under the rug, exactly, because you're scared to bring it up again, because you're waiting for him to bring it up when he's like in a safe space, which just never seems to happen. Listen, this love, unfortunately, won't last. Like as far as like the way that you're feeling towards him now, it sounds early, but you won't be able to develop a deeper love with this person. Like deeper love, meaning like. We can face issues together. We're on the same team. Yeah, and we're gonna f- attack things as a team. It sounds like you're on your own team, and he's on his team, and he's already seeing you as the other team. <laughs> yeah, and I think I think bringing it up in a way that's like, hey, I don't think it's fair that I'm your enemy. You exactly. know, exactly. Like I, how lo- does that work? I love you. I have feelings for you. You're my I, number one. I want to be on the same team as you. I felt like I feel like we are a team, and when we're not able to communicate it feels like i am being i'm being pushed off the team yeah why can't so like you know not even bringing up the panic attack thing when it's resolved when he's fine and he's got his breathing under control and he's like okay yeah afterward why can't they continue to talk about it it sounds like she doesn't want to bring it up again because it's almost like this situation with the panic attacks is training her not to. Yes. And, that, and, and that's I'm not saying he's doing it on purpose yeah. or whatever. I'm just saying that's not that's not okay. And look, I have anxiety. I have panic attacks. There have been times where Steve and I have gotten to a little like, you know, argument or we're like resolving an issue and I start having too much anxiety and panicking, but what I do is I I'm not done with this this issue. I have to go and calm down and regroup, but then we continue to talk about it. And like, I'm able to, once I'm able to articulate what I'm trying to say, because what happens when I have this like crazy anxiety is I don't feel like I can articulate what my, what I'm trying to say to him. So I, I need to be able to calm down, recenter, bullet out what I'm trying to say and then clearly tell him what I'm trying to say so that he can understand it. And maybe, just giving benefit of the doubt, maybe that's what he needs. Maybe he needs to find a process for him to say, okay, hold on, I'm not able to articulate what I'm thinking. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go take a 15 minute or okay, I'm gonna go calm down, regroup, and then we can finish from there and maybe that's something that you guys can understand together like maybe you have a code word for that maybe there's some sort of language thing between you two to understand that hey i'm not shutting this down i just need a minute the the reason why you're you love our relationship and many people listening love our relationship is because we tackle problems together yeah and and that's how our relationship got deeper right it got more than just anything physical or whatever it's gotten so deep and like it feels like our souls are like in in a binding soul contract because of the way that we've attacked life together 
So it, it, I'm just telling you right now, I know that you feel love towards this person, but you, you won't be able to, to make it deep if you can't get this figured you, out. You, you are giving love, but not feeling love. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because you... You, if you give your it's like you toss a ball to your partner you don't know if they're gonna if they're gonna, gonna leave you hanging exactly and, and and that not knowing like not knowing if you're actually supported in this relationship is frightening like that's <laughs> like you shouldn't have to walk on eggshells not knowing if your partner's gonna have your back so that's yeah, the number one thing just I, what she just said is the number one thing a hundred percent think that you have you hit it on the nose what you need to work on and I don't know if your partner is willing to do that with you, but if he's enough. not, maybe it's just not the right time for you to. And it sucks. I get it. Cause like, it's so hard to find someone you connect with on a like chemistry level, mm -hmm. but this compatibility is missing. The compatibility of being able to work through issues together and you need both. You need like the chemistry of like, oh, we have such fun times. We make each other laugh. We have great sex. And the compatibility of like we can build a life together. Yes. All right. Good, Good luck. Great We're question. For you. We are rooting for Please you. Please keep us posted. Yes, would love that. Okay. Next, this is from November thirtieth. It's titled "Help." Oh, oh my God. goodness! Sorry. Lo all in caps. All in caps. Okay. Very long. Great. All right. Hello, Nikki and Steve. Please keep me anonymous and give me a cool nickname. A cool nickname? I'm not good at cool nicknames. Oh, Rico Suave. Oh, hell yeah. That's already someone's nickname. Rico Suave 12. Okay, there we go. Now it's original. Especially since I'm emailing from my school email. Okay. Before I get into the subject of this email, I would love to give you compliments. Thank you so much. We are All fueled right. by compliments. Oh my God, we need them so much. I listen to your podcast every morning as I get ready for the day. Adding this podcast to my morning routine has really helped me look forward to getting up in the morning because I get to listen to this podcast. Oh my God. We, right. we hope that you are we having an excellent morning. We got them. All right. You guys are both so glamorous. Steve, a little bit more. Facts. 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 And both so hilarious. Nikki, a little bit more. Facts. Facts. So much facts. I'm so grateful for all the advice you've shared, and I look up to you both. Moving on. Thank you so much for the compliments. I'm currently an 18-year-old freshman in college. I've been struggling with th some things lately, and one of them is wondering if I'll ever end up in a relationship. Oh, baby. Oh. You are so young and pretty. We don't talk to freshmen. Sorry. We're going to move on. Yeah, but moving on. We're going to move on. No, I'm afraid, a I'm afraid a potential partner might view me differently because of my past traumas. How do I even feel comfortable enough with the idea of being vulnerable in a relationship? I've become a very guarded person due to my childhood traumas, complicated relationship with my mother, abandonment issues, being neglected, etc. What is the right time to open up about your past once you start dating somebody? If I'm being honest, I'd rather be alone for the rest of my life than risk getting into a relationship with somebody that could hurt me the way my mom has. I'm scared of feeling emotionally broken again. I'm also afraid that if I don't start dating soon, then all the good men will be taken up or men don't won't want to date me because I'll end up a 40-year-old woman with no experience. I apologize for dumping a whole bunch of questions on you. I hope it wasn't too much. I also apologize for potential grammar or spelling errors. It's three in the morning on a lovely Thursday morning. I really should go to bed. Thanks, Rico Suave 12. Also, yes, I go to therapy. Okay. Oh, that's great. I was, I was just about to say that. Yeah. I mean, that, th this is a deeper one, right? Because obviously your traumas are almost behaving as a reflex that's pushing everything away around yeah. you. And that's a, that's a toughie because you have that soft center that you want to share with somebody. So I think also you you need to calm down. You need to yeah, slow yeah, yeah. down. Slow, yeah. slow it down, Missy May. We, you are talking about forty being 40 with no experience. That is... 22 years into your future <laughs> that means you didn't do have make any waves in 22 years you think that that really that really is going to happen so like in therapy i don't know if they've gone over this with you but you are doing something called catastrophizing catastrophizing is when you spiral into the worst case scenario that could possibly happen and somehow get yourself to believe that that might happen to you yes but if you really break it down and think of the worst thing that could happen to you, like I just did, you think that you're going to go 22 years without making any sort of improvement in your current life. Honey, that is not going to happen. It's not going to happen, especially since you're taking steps to go to therapy. You're listening to this podcast. It was like, Damn right. even though we're not experts, we are giving you some pieces of our mind. Also, there's some gem 40 year olds out there. Yeah. So I, I you're not even... broken at 40, exactly. by the way. Yeah. And and not being experienced, <clears throat> I mean, are you talking just 
sexually I, or I assume so because uh, you're experienced in ev- a lot of other ways by 40 i imagine you've been putting your time into something else but you know let's talk about you being 18 right now one you're really young and also this particular age group is a really confusing one it's super in a transition like you're out of high school you're now in this whole other realm where you're on your own you're kind of you might still be living at home with your parents maybe you are maybe you aren't maybe you're a little dependent on them maybe you're using their health insurance etc maybe they're paying for college i don't know the situation but usually like there's still a little bit of dependency on your parents maybe i don't know you have a weird a, a bad relationship with your mom you brought up so maybe you you aren't um and if you aren't then you're completely on your own and thrown out into the wilderness as uh, the world is calling you an adult when you still feel very much like a child. Like, what's the difference between you a few months ago when you were 17 and you now at 18, other than that people are calling you an adult and treating you like one, even though you have no idea what to do. Um, and also, even after this phase, you still have no idea what to do. Like, no one ever knows what they're doing. So I just want you to know that right away. People don't have it all figured out. But especially during this age frame, I feel like you feel you're supposed to have it figured out. When this is like the fun part, honestly, this is fun. figuring it out is the fun part. And this is something that I'm still learning because as you move into different parts of your life and, and right now I feel like I'm going through a transition period, I have to keep reminding myself that figuring out is the fun part. It's like also you sound like um, you sound like a really nice person. I, you got to give yourself a little bit of credit. If I was you, I would write down some of the things that you like about yourself. And even if it's just one thing, I would write it down. Yeah, and then I want you to start adding to that, and however you add to that, you know whether you take on a hobby and you start getting good at it, or or even like Nikki's thing, which is like she gets really interested in different hobbies, Mm -hmm. and I love that about her. But like, you know, as long as you're as long as you're finding more things out about yourself that that bring you joy, yes, and build your self esteem, exactly. Then you don't have to worry about is somebody else going to like me? Absolutely, I think that people look for. Validation another person, other people. yeah, it's another awful. person to build their self esteem. You need to build your own self esteem first. You need to find things that make you happy, that make you feel confident, that validate yourself from inside. And internally. then you'll be the strongest partner ever for somebody because you're not leaning on them. You're actually enhancing their life by being around them, just like they're enhancing their life being around you. It's more of a symbiosis or a, 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 a symbiotic relationship also i i like the exercise of writing down everything you want in a partner and then being that yeah absolutely Be that absolutely yeah. yes i love that yeah um one there was one other thing that i wanted to say uh oh yeah when steve was talking about writing down like everything you like about yourself i won't really want you to think about that because you just listed a bunch of reasons why you're unworthy exactly and i that is something I'm scared of you making a con- your, like your making identity. concrete into it, an yes, identity and yes. a belief that that's who you are. That is not who you you're are. unlovable. You're unworthy. No one will like you because you have anxiety. No one's gonna be able to deal with you. Exactly. Okay. Deal with yourself first. If you are able to love you and deal with you, then there is somebody that can love you and deal with you. And I promise you, there's people who love you. So I yeah. I wouldn't. You sound like a gem. So yeah. I would, you got to just, like Nikki said, breathe a little bit, chill a little bit. Mm-hmm. The answer is not going to hit you in the face like a movie, right? You're, you are got to build towards it and you have to build yourself up because then you will be the best you. And you'll be, <clears throat> when you get into something with somebody eventually, and you will, um, you won't be needing them. You will be, you will be in a mutual yeah. A mutually beneficial relationship. Where you give them energy, they give you energy. Yes. You don't want to be in a spot where you're like, wait, I need you because you're going to make my day. And, and that's like, young love. That's not, yeah. young love. And um, you, you might know, have to go through that. You might have to, but that's what that's the, the biggest problem with young love is that people wake up and get all their validation through their partner and eventually someone's getting sucked dry. Yeah, absolutely. And when and you said like, when's the right time to bring up your past? Uh You'll you'll know like it will just slowly be leaked out like authentically through conversation. It's not like, hey, I need to sit you down and tell you about my past. <laughs> hey, I got to break the news to you. <laughs> yeah. like No, it's, it's someone loves you. Someone cares about you. They want to know. Yeah. Hey, I think I'm like this because well, this thing happened to me and exactly. blah, blah, blah. And then you start talking and then they listen to you. You feel good, you know, good and loved and you get hugged and, you know, it's all good. Um, but I don't I think that you're putting too much thought and planning your life out 
Like, if I don't do this by this time, then I'm going to end up like this. Let it breathe. Yeah. <laughs> Let it breathe. You'll be fine. You'll, you're going to be fine. I'm glad you're in therapy. But uh, yeah, you're going to be just fine. Focus on things that you love that give you joy and just start there. Just start there without having to know what happens in the in the end. Amen. And with that, we are going to go on a little break. When we come back, we have more of your questions, believe it or not. So we BRB. And please check out all of our advertisers. They help us quite a bit. Yes. Just like our Patreoners help us all quite a bit. Yes. Thank you. Yo, it's the new year. And one thing I really want to focus on is all the ways we can save money. And you know what the easiest way is? To canceling cancel your subscriptions. subscriptions that you maybe don't even know that you're still subscribed to. By the way, this episode is sponsored by Rocket Money. Yes. Formerly known as Truebill is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Listen, we love this service. I wish this service existed a decade ago. Yes. When, I we mean, saved a lot of money. Saved a lot of money. I um I used to rent an apartment and they made me get this like apartment insurance. And it was building me like randomly from a random um, account that I didn't I didn't really recognize for like almost twelve to fourteen months. Jeez. Yeah, I thought I was I was just getting charged erroneously every month, even after I had moved out of that place. Yeah, over eighty percent of people have subscriptions they forgot about, like. I don't know, a streaming service you bought to watch one show or that free trial that you forgot that you they were going to charge you after it ended and you forgot that you were even on a free trial. You, on iTunes, you, you accidentally click something and you subscribe to it yeah, for like $3.99. So many instances. like, And then they always have some obscure things. So when you're looking at your bank account, you're like, oh, maybe that's something I use. I don't remember. Well, Rocket Money can put everything in one place and makes it super easy to cancel those subscriptions. So stop throwing your money away, cancel unwanted subscriptions, and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash stdty. That's rocketmoney.com slash stdty. Rocketmoney.com slash stdty. And we're back. And I want to remind everybody that we are not experts. If you were expecting expert opinions on right. things, well, we'll give you an opinion. But legally, it's not an expert opinion, so don't come for us. <laughs> okay. Um, this next question is titled, Please Help Me, sent December 2nd. Update. Thank you. Oh, it's an update. Oh, it says re, please help me. Oh. So Okay, it's an update. Okay. Hell yeah. Okay, we love hearing updates. Some so far, so far they've all been pretty good updates. Pretty good, but yeah. you know, like we'll see. I don't read these ahead of time, so we'll see. Thank you so much for your advice and input on my situation. Hearing from you both and also reading the comments really did help me in my decision. Ooh, ooh, boy. Let's hear what this was about. It was a heart emoji and a fingers crossed emoji. Okay. The first month after finding out that my fiance was a porn addict was brutal. I felt like I didn't love him anymore. I wondered how I could ever trust him again. And I wondered what else he could have possibly lied to me about since he was hiding something so huge from me. My fiance spent days crying and regretting everything he did to me in our relationship and told me that when he initially told me he would stop watching porn, he meant it and had deleted over 300 plus videos from his hard drive. But after a few weeks, he couldn't resist the urge. He was open and honest about any questions I had and made it very clear that he would do anything he could not to lose me. I made a list of things he that had to be completed in order for me to remain in the relationship, like attending the 12-step program, doing coursework, reading a couple books on addiction, going to therapy, etc. I let him know that I'm giving him a certain amount of time to show me that he's serious about this, and I also let him know that if we do end up getting married, we will get be getting a prenup in case he relapses in the future and it progresses into something else like cheating. That's a good idea. It's great. Yeah. A lot of people are like weird about prenups, but it honestly doesn't matter at all unless like you are getting divorced and in that <laughs> case you're really gonna wish you had one yeah. so we don't have one but um we didn't really have anything before we got married no, so that's so fine. You know, it is what we it built is it all together uh so i guess i was putting all my trust in this guy that <laughs> same he's not gonna cheat Fingers on me crossed, heart emoji he dove into this 12-step program oh good he dove into this 12-step program that very that very same day he has not missed a meeting, reads every single night, and is now celebrating five weeks with no porn. Let's oh go, my buddy. God. Let's yes. Go. My issue never came from the fact that he was masturbating. I encouraged it actually and had bought him toys for that in the past. That's awesome. That's super supportive. I was just so hurt that he was choosing porn over me, even when I was in the next room over, and I found the frequency and amount that he was consuming it to be very concerning. It sounds like it was, yeah. especially because it would be during work. He now sees what his addiction has done to our relationship, and he is 
and how he was treating me because of it. And he has made an effort to immediately stop, start putting effort into our relationship and how he treats me again. Today, we are driving to our first home together. Wow, 36 km, 3,600 kilometers from where we used to live. And I can't help but feel like this is a fresh start for us. I'm glad he accidentally bookmarked the website so that we could have the discussion that led me to finding out he was an addict so that we could get him help. But I'm sad that his recovery had to come at my expense. I love him very much and I know that he loves me very much too based off his commitment to getting better. I'm still afraid that one day he might relapse, but I'm confident that if he does, we'll get through it together and it won't turn into anything more. Thank you to everyone who commented advice on the original video. And thank you again, Nikki and for your wonderful advice heart 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 we love oh you. my god i love you we lo i love this so much the only thing that bugged me is you use kilometers okay i had to translate that 2200 miles whoa. whoa you like basically moved across the country you really did that's awesome it does Congrats. sound like a fresh start and you're absolutely right like she said i'm glad he bookmarked that site yeah, it, so it, that it did start it, it, it works out his incredible growth mm -hmm. and healing which is awesome i think that a lot of times people see things and they're like why did this happen to me? But a lot of these things have to happen to, sh to shed truth. And, and when forward. there's truth, you find solutions and light and like, you know, yeah, exactly. You move forward in a healthy yep. way. So I'm so, I'm so happy for you. That's epic. And I, and I wish for a, a new positive update in a few months. And I'm glad it's like, he's treating it like a process because that's very much what it is. Yeah. Like the more that we've understood about addiction, especially through doing this show for years, um, the more, you start to realize like it's definitely like and and even talking with Nikki's brother about this it's not like something where it's like okay you go through the ticker tape and now you're done and you're, you're moving on it's like mm -hmm. it's a constant work mm -hmm. like when he was here for thanksgiving like he's like talking about meetings and stuff like it's just constant work and you just yeah when we think about it it's like oh well he went through that and then he came out the and other now side. he's healed yeah 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 but it's very much like oh no it's he's still in the process of it and yeah. i really admire seeing that me like, too work in, in him and then and then it sounds like in your your and guy too. He's always reminding himself why he's what he's doing it for and yeah. how blessed he is, like because of this process that he's been going through. And he just seems genuinely grateful for he is having I've gone through the process. Never seen him this happy ever. Absolutely, like night and day difference. Oh yeah. All right, this one. Oh, also an update. Great. Let's go. Awesome. Let's go with the updates. I like how the first half was questions and then the second half is updates, updates so yeah. far. Uh, life update. Am I? This was uh, regarding episode two hundred four. Am I the problem plus love life advice? Yeah. All right. I feel like I had to put the episode number to catch everyone up on the T. <laughs> oh, Good morning slash afternoon slash evening, Sticky. This is Keenan, your favorite hopeless romantic. Hi, Keenan. We remember you. We love you. I have to give you credit where credit is due. So I'd like to start by thanking you for being amazing and genuine. Nikki has such BDE. Oh my god, I had. Oh, I should have worn my oh, shirt. Worn shirt. I have a shirt. This is. Big, big dick energy <laughs> and the <laughs> fact that steve loki strokes her ego pun intent unintended huh. it was intended so lovable hoping i have a woman as amazing as her when i grow up but i guess steve is cool too though lol jk thank you also sir. hashtag by woo <laughs> let's go <laughs> let's go keenan we love you Kenan. thank, you. thank hey, you for that Kenan's checking all he the boxes is just, he's working us yeah he's, wor he's working oh my us. gosh i'm in love he's hopeless romantic yeah he's working he's got me up. under his spell okay the last time i wrote to you guys i was still a hopeless romantic I was a hopeless romantic. I still am. Uh, with a type of love life you make rom-com slash soap operas about. Twas fun for a while, but I started to feel like I really was the problem. So I wrote in. I'd like to share a life update on that. Please feel free to summarize because it definitely might be too long and I talk too much. At the beginning of 2022, you guys answered my question about if my habits were the problem in my love life. I took your conversation as I needed to go, to, uh, as I needed to learn to let go, find my worth and let love find me. Oh my gosh, we just gave just this advice. This. Yeah, it's crazy. great. It's crazy how that was like last, like early last year yeah so. yeah okay so here's somebody that did just that let's see i took your comment okay at the time i felt undeserving of love so i needed to get where i could and wasn't valuing valuing myself because i didn't have anything nor was stable financially the following months were a tough struggle with depression and frustration but i came out of it finally employed at a job i'm passionate about after two years of non-working i never saw how much of a bubble i was trapping myself in romanticizing the quote-unquote what if instead of taking it as it is and that i actually might be a catch hey Let's go. it was all about becoming comfortable with myself and presenting a level of confidence faked it till i made it i do still see the woman i wrote in about because we go to the same church and and she's known my family her whole life, so I can't really escape her. But I try my best to my best to avoid her, which probably <laughs> isn't healthy. <laughs> oh my god! 
That's so funny. Um, P.S. Don't buy Wu on KuCoin and transfer using KCC Network LMAO $500 wasted. Why would you do that? <laughs> Keenan. There's no liquidity on there, buddy. I really love this life update. I'm so happy for you. This is like mid, you're midway. You're like, yeah, you're getting really cool. all the pieces. You're getting all the tools. And I'm excited for the life that you are building. Dude, he's probably trying to save on fees. Oh, Keenan, I, I, I see it so well. It's okay. <laughs> You'll be fine. Again, patreon.com slash sticky if you'd like to go to Crypto Corner every right. week. Qcoin answers... didn't help you with that, though. Qcoin didn't do shit about that. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it later. All right. This one is a question. Are you ready for another question? Mm -hmm. Okay. This one's titled help. A lot of these are titled help. What to do about a toxic mother? Compliments and juicy drama. Oh, Ooh, snap. you got us. First, compliments. We need them. Very badly. Also, give me a fun nickname. Okay, fun times fun one. Fun times one. Fun times one. Welcome to the party. Keeping the Nikki pattern of adding <laughs> numbers to it, like aim names. That makes it original yeah, if yeah, you add the numbers to it. Nikki and Steve, you have no you have no idea how much I love you guys and look up to you. When I was single, my dream was to have a relationship like yours. And thankfully, now I am blessed with the most wonderful husband and the sweetest little five-month-old. Oh, my God. Holy congratulations. Cow. That's a lot of progress. That's awesome. Congrats. Maybe way older by the time you read this, LOL. That's this hilarious. Was December 18th, but thank you for knowing us Not and bad. giving us room. Not bad. Because we do, we do do that. That's yeah, true. we do. Nikki, you are amazing, stunning, gorgeous, sexy, beautiful, and you don't look a day over 21. Stop. Agreed. Go on. Agreed. And I also relate to you so much. I'm an, I'm an anxious overthinker who loves to pick up new hobbies and challenge myself to be good at them because if I'm not, I will hate myself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fair. Accurate. Uh, Steve, Iceman, Crypto King, man of many talents, cool. kindest hearted human out there. Facts. Oh. You're an example for all young men and I wish there were more people like you. Oh, you're I so sweet. I do too. That is probably the sole reason I would ever want to have a child is to have like another little Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I want one for an, I want another pain in my ass. Okay, what if she like? <laughs> what if it's a girl and she looks like me, but she acts like you? I oh love my that. Gosh. Or vice versa. Either way. <laughs> uh, okay, now on to my toxic. Uh, by the way, thank you so much for that. You were that was so, really nice. so so sweet. Fun times one. Now on to my toxic mother. My mother is, in my opinion, a narcissist, and I have a hard time cutting her off because sometimes my father begs me to talk to her for his own selfish reasons, or I feel bad for the sacrifices she's made, That I, and I reach out and regret it every single time. And also, my inner child is still longing for her love and approval. That's so glad that you recognize that. I'm so happy that you can see that. Um, anyway, my mother is the main breadwinner, and if it weren't for her, I wouldn't have the comfortable comfortable life I had growing up but she was also cold controlling verbally abuse abusive and her way of quote-unquote disciplining me my entire childhood was to publicly humiliate me for things I was embarrassed about like wetting the bed getting my period and according to publicly her publicly humiliate being you for a that. fat cow holy god what tough love huh? that is uh, really abusive yeah I had everything I needed materially as a child but lacked the true love and compassion of a mother and the luxury to live in a peaceful happy home because my parents fought all the time when I got engaged, our relationship just got worse. She became more distant and didn't help me out financially. In my culture, the parents take care of the wedding expenses. Instead, she chose to travel and live her best life. My husband is from a different country and we had to travel there for the wedding, but she made sure to make that process as hard and as painful as possible. And when we finally got there, she caused a lot of drama, talked shit about everyone, picked fights with me, even on my wedding day. Oh my God. Ouch. And ran out of the hall crying. Imagine it as dramatic as you possibly can. I, I wow. can't. I can't. I imagine a wailing woman yes. like yes. running down the hall. Through a, through a ballroom. Wow. The day of our marriage registry slash license. Finally, after deciding to cut her off for good or at least a few years until I heal and no, and no longer allow her to trigger me, my father called begging me to call her because she's being a bitch to him and cut him off financially. Whoa. So for his reasons. Yeah. And um, if I'm on good terms with her, she'll be on good terms with him, to which I reply that he's a selfish man who's only thinking of his own comfort and he is willing to disturb my peace to get his own. Advice on this whole Correct. situation, please. Am I right for cutting her off knowing that I set boundaries before, but she walked right over them? Should I cut my father off too? Dude, you are so good at you this. You are spot on. You're killing this thing. You don't even need us, honestly. No, you're good. Like this, you are exactly in a healthy yep. place that exactly where you need to be. I, I think that everything you've done so far is exactly right. Very mature. I think you've been more than uh, empathetic to 
your mom's behavioral patterns and you set your boundaries. You were still like, okay, I'll, she's being kind of a bitch, but I'll work with it. Mm -hmm. And she continued to just trample all over you. So yeah, I she think- She can't get by on reputation alone, right? Sometimes, you, unfortunately, parents get these titles because they are your parents. Yeah. And so we give them have. a lot of slack. But you set boundaries. You you basically laid down the law and said, "Here's how it's got to go." She said, "I don't respect you," and yeah. so you say, "Cool, you don't respect me. Then I'm I'm going to stay over here, right? You be over there, and I'll be over here." And if you and you already know the path yeah. to getting your to getting you know love for me is the respect that boundaries that I put down for you. Yeah. And if she's not going to play that game, then she's out. And who knows if she ever will. And, exactly. and what sucks is exactly what you said is that your inner child is still kind of longing for that type of motherly love, but it's just not going to come from her unless she makes a lot of adjustments. But you've been able to find that. What I love about your question and story is that you've been able to find that in yourself. Like you've been able to give yourself the type of love that you would have wanted as a child, the inner child that is begging for it you've been able to be the mother for yeah, yourself for sure. for which sure. is awesome and then you in turn attracted someone who loves you like that yes. like your your husband loves you uh, in the way that you've always wanted to be loved because that was the energy that you already created in yourself it works like that it's funny that it works like that because people think i need a partner to love me the way i was never loved as a child no 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 you need to love yourself the way that you were never loved as a child and then you'll attract someone with a with a similar vibration of love it's just the vibe you're putting out that for some it reason it attracts the same type and, and me and Nick are big believers in that because we've seen it happen many many many, many, many times. times so yeah that that is i mean like nicky said you don't even need us so um gosh yeah, I mean, we're, we're useless. We're useless for you. We, we cr you crushed it for yourself. You we're, really, really we're did. Very, very proud. And very I know proud. that that I know maybe that's not very satisfying because you're. It still sucks. It mm -hmm. sucks that your parents are like this. But I so I'm so proud of you for recognizing that that this is their problem and maybe it's not your problem. Maybe there will be another relationship that or something that comes into your life that gives you that another part of that want that you have for missing your mother well the right? five uh was this the one with the five month old yeah 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 i mean i think that the work that you've done on yourself with and with yourself i think that you're gonna be the best fucking mom you're yeah, gonna be sure. able to give your child all the love that you wanted mm -hmm. as a child mm -hmm. and it, and i think that's what it was all for like i mean not that it was all, uh, that had to happen for this to happen, but like that that contrast, that growth that you made, you you are gonna feel, you're gonna feel that love from the love you give to your child. It's gonna be reciprocated through that. Exactly. I mean, it, it's just I think that's just awesome. Um, I also just think your dad is in a codependent relationship with your mom. Narcissists tend to be with codependents. They yes. attract each other. Yes. Um, and that's exactly like, it's just painted <laughs> that way. Like and it's the, way, very... the way that he reaches out to you isn't out of love for you. It's for his own selfish reasons, as you note. So it's like, you know, what are you gonna do? Yeah. <clears throat> and um, you can still, you know, just set firm boundary. You don't have to be, aggressive with them at all i think you handled it exactly the way you should where it's just like hey this is these are my rules and you give that to me then you're welcome back in my life but uh for and, any other reason no and don't let them take your empathy from you yeah you know what i mean like like and all i mean by that is like okay so your mom is behaving a certain way and you obviously feel bad for her right but you don't you know in cutting her off you're you already did the hardest thing for you right but like you don't have to become a cold person. Yeah. Um, you don't like. It actually you know I mean? it doesn't sound like she has. It I don't think she has exact. I don't. It I don't sounds either. like you cutting your parents off has actually protected your joy and happiness. It's actually protect like almost I like agree. you put a bubble, a protective bubble around you and your family, and I love that for you. Yeah, and I, all I mean is like in the way that you're cutting them off, like. Um, you don't have to feel like it took away your compassion. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like it, it, you did it to preserve yourself. And you gave them enough chances. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Do we have time for one more? We do. Okay. This one is titled, Is there a magical spell to having long fulfilling relationships? Like wizard stuff. 
<laughs> Imagine. <laughs> I love this. Okay, why not? Okay, great title. Uh, hello, Poker Master Nikki Limo and Woo Man Steve. Let's go. Hello, the Ka- woman. Greetings. I knew people start calling me the woman. That sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stupid. <laughs> He's so stupid. Well, I like the idea that I'm pissed about it because it sounds like woman. You labeled yourself. <laughs> I yeah. Labeled myself, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Quick background on my question. <laughs> I have finished school and I'm now going to the workforce for the film industry. Something I'm happy to work on and exciting for the unwinding road. Congrats. When school ended and summer began, I I really was enlightened. Everyone was out and so many art galleries began and some other friendships blossomed and I met new people. I'd been kicked out of a cultish, toxic female group and I'm still processing a lot of the unrealistic expectations and how to re-navigate healthy new friendships. I am back home and damn, am I depressed about my relationships, myself and my path to life because the truth is I want a group of friends. I want people that are glorious to push me and call me babes and someone I could have a fun cook with and go to parties with. You must be from the UK. UK. (laughs) Have a fun cook with. (laughs) Because we want uh, we want that too. Because only because we watch Love Island UK. Wait, have oh wait, it was fun cook with. Okay, there's a comma in there. (laughs) But call me babes. Yeah, babes. Yeah, babes. Come on. Okay, some people are reconnected with from school, but oddly enough, I asked these same people toward the end of summer and. Uh, that I did hang out with and all of a sudden they don't have time or super busy and well avoid me well they see the well avoid me that's definitely we okay, we just went to Mexico with a bunch of UK yeah, people a bunch of UK people and didn't Penny call us babes yeah and and like the well uh oh you're well angry yeah <laughs> yeah, like yeah, the well angry. yeah that's great instead of very it's like the, or goes to me okay they avoided her or ghosted her. Okay, it sucks because some say, hey, let's hang, but then don't. It's heartbreak. It's heartbreaking because I feel like I'm not enough and basically kind of lost eight friendships. I think I do. It hurts, and sometimes I feel like I don't know what steps to take because I want to reflect. I want to leave the space open when I see them. It's overwhelming, and it's hard. What's something that should they don't tell you about toxic friendships and re-navigating yourself and finding better friends? Thanks. Okay, this is a great question. Really good question. Like, what I have learned, because I used to feel the same way. Like, I was maybe in my mid-20s when I talked about a lot about, like, I just wanted friends. Like, I wanted, like, a yeah. group of friends, friend, right? Friend group. And I continuously felt this way every time I'd make a new group of friends. And, like, it just felt like I had this pressure. And, like, then I don't know if they like me as much as I like them because they keep making excuses. And I keep having to be the one initiating. And I was just like, well, whatever. Blah, blah, blah. The thing that I have concluded after 10 years of this journey is the real ones just like with my romantic relationship the real ones accept you 100 percent fully you don't have to continuously prove something exactly. you don't have to um like it doesn't have to be this this type of work this hard and it's not heartbreaking because you feel loved no matter what and i know that you're like well how do i get that okay well you know it's like that's that's nice nikki but how do i get that well it just it's a slow process yeah it's like yeah the same as what we just said about attracting a romantic relationship where you have to really love yourself you have to find things that bring you joy alone you have to treat yourself like your best friend treat yourself the way that you want to be treated by someone else and that type of energy will attract another type of energy uh treat other people like that so you know you know you want someone that calls you babe and like your besties well you know maybe you start doing that with people that you're kind of vaguely interested without getting attached to them first yeah you know know, it's one of those things too where coming out of uh, a lack of confidence can put you in this little rut right yeah but then if you, and I, I can only speak from experience with that too, because I remember, God, having acne as a kid and like, just like wanting all these things and always wanting like a bunch of friends and all this, all this kind of stuff. Because after I moved from Virginia to San Diego, I had none. And then I was going through that weird teenager growth phase where like, you know, a lot of hormones and like, again, acne and shit. Mm-hmm. But then um, <clears throat> slowly over time, as I, as I just went inside of myself and just found things that I like to do myself, like eventually improv and like doing theater and shit. Yeah. Um, I started to realize that people wanted to hang out with me, which was weird. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wait, you guys want to hang out with me? Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then um, it just starts to snowball from there. And you start to, one day you realize you have like a whole friend group and you didn't even know. Yeah. And, And I find that the best friendships have started from just like, I mean, from like, common interest and and then and then once you have the common interest like the like you see if you see the life the same way like if you meet people that see life the same way where it sounds like you're not a person that sees life in a way where you have to 
like do certain things to fit in with a group like that's really anxiety inducing and like you feel that kind of pressure from your old friend group okay find other people that see life the same way which is more like a free flowing like hey you want to hang to that day yeah i'm free and then they show up okay yeah. well, these people are filtering themselves out and i know it's painful right now but it's actually helpful because you can see the type of people you don't want to be friends with they are not worth your investment going back to the very first question is this person worth my time investment you know, is it, yep. is it, a, it's, it's an investment. Every, anything you spend time or money on, you need to think of it in terms of an investment. If a person says they're going to, they want to hang and then they don't hang or they come up with a litany of excuses for why they don't, they can't hang with you. And they keeps, keeps happening over and over and over again, where you're like, I think this person just doesn't want to hang. Right. Um, then that's not the person for you. Exactly. You don't need, then, and you just go, cool, thank you. Like, thank you for making it easy. Um, I'm not going to invest time into this, uh, but you don't need to get emotionally invested either. Like where it's like, oh, I'm hurt by this person. Just keep it kind of detached. You know, it's like dating. It's like, yeah. you're just finding people that mesh with you. And like, what's your vibe as a friend? Do you want like, chill cool hang friends yes. or do you want like party friends that like i want to rage all the time nah. do you want activity friends who you all go hiking together or sure. something like what kind of thing i think you need to visualize like what what is your friend group your ideal friend group look like like what is that type of energy for you what does it make you feel like like picture that and then if you find someone that matches that sort of energy and vibe cool maybe they're worth your time investment if they're not matching that that is not worth your time. So. Also, me and Nikki's best friends, like our best pals, like our closest pals, all have the same kind of vibe, which is like, hey, if we can't do something, because me and Nikki work for ourselves, so sometimes things come up. Like, yeah. And we're like, hey, sorry, we, we want to hang, but we can't. They're not taking it personally. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they're, they're, there's a level of chill that you have to have if you want to be a good friend, too. Yeah. Like, you can't make it all about you and how excited you were to hang or whatever the hell. Yes. Like, you have to, like, it's, there's give and take, and, like, there's, like, there's, and with give and take, there's just give to that give, right? It's like, okay, yeah, you can cancel on me and I'm not going to be a, a, a cunt to you about it. Right. Like, like the, I the trust people who them do that, I promise you, we wash them out pretty quick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. We just can't, we can't hang with that kind I don't, of stress. I don't want guilt trips. No, I don't I, want, we I have don't, a life. Yeah. We have to, we have to do things. It, and if me saying that I, hey, sorry, this thing came up is you taking it as, a slight to our friendship, then we're not true friends exactly. because I would never intentionally like slight a friendship. What was the point? What's the point of that? Exactly. Like, why would I do that? Exactly. So, yeah, I mean, in my ideal visualization of the types of friends I like to have and surround myself with, they're all like chill, free flowing, understanding people. We when we get together, we have a great time. What if we can't get together because of life circumstance? It's not personal, and that that works for for us we love that exactly. that's just easy in our lifestyle it helps it not create resistance to things that we want to do in life and and it's just supportive you know and knowing what knowing what you want like Nick was saying and earlier like really will eventually attract it like like um i one of the things i always wanted just to, like, i feel very whole by the way and, and complete in my life but i always wanted like a buddy to watch football with yeah you know what i mean like you, nikki knows this so like you know i used to go to like red rock if nikki was there and i'd like sit at the bars and like watch games it's like i, I love that because like it's like people watching and like come because there's a natural camaraderie you get with sports that yeah. i think is unlike anything else and then now i kind of have a lot of that yeah <laughs> um because <clears throat> we ended up moving where we moved and then my next door neighbor is like just as into football as i am and every sunday we both just can't wait to hang out and watch football. Mm -hmm. And it's just a very natural thing. It's like, yo, dude, just let's, yeah, your house, my house, or are we going to a bar or what are we doing? But like, we both know we're going to be watching football. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't even, like, as it was initially happening, like the first couple weeks of the year, I wasn't even thinking about how I always wanted a buddy like that. I was just like, okay, yeah, yeah, we're doing it. Well, I think you lost your buddy like earlier. Like, I think during the pandemic, I just stopped wanting to watch football. That's true. Like, I don't know. I was just like in a different buddy. space. And like all throughout our relationship, we watched football together every Sunday. Yeah. And I think you even brought this up to me. You're like, you're like, oh, why are you always, you're gone now. And you're like, you don't watch football with me anymore. Yeah. Like, you brought it up a few times and I was like, I don't know. And then I was watching football, but I wasn't really, I was like on my phone. Cause yeah, I was true. just like, I just, I don't know. It was like the pandemic. There was just too much shit going on and I couldn't get into like watching sports for entertainment mm -hmm. at that time. I was just, 
I was just getting all in my feels about too many things. Yeah, yeah. And so, true. yeah, I just kind of like lingered. And um, yeah, and I think ever since then, there's there has been that like, ah, oh, shit, like there's this hole now. Yeah, true. And I'm glad that it got filled. Yeah, yeah. and Because and it... you knew what was missing though. Oh, for sure. You were like, this is five. I just wish I had this, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's not like, you know, you, you don't watch or like you won't watch the Super Bowl or whatever, but you... Yeah, you I just found ha- another interest mm-hmm. like in poker like is more <laughs> of your what you would rather be doing anyway. Yeah, I was, I'd be like watching football with Steve during the pandemic, but like playing, playing poker. poker on my yeah. phone. <laughs> and and I didn't take it personal. No, and no, I no. never confronted her about I never, it. No, I never <laughs> so felt never like a weirdness. I, I, no, no. <laughs> but I did. I, I was trying to still be the, the buddy, but I was yeah. like, I because I used to. Be yeah, really into yeah, it, but every Sunday, yeah. it's something something stopped for me during that time period, and so yeah, um, I very much was like aware of that. That like that happened to me with fantasy football, honestly, because of crypto. Yeah, like I used yeah. to be like all in, like so focused and interested. And listening is, to wasn't podcasts it funny about that it. like like year two of us being together? I was like, if only you were this passionate about something that could actually make you money or improve your <laughs> yeah. lifestyle. Yeah, I remember that. Because <laughs> he was so dedicated to researching so much yeah. about fantasy, all the stats. Well, I'm just like, a very competitive person, and in the group that we were in, I wanted to beat them. So it was, yeah. like, it was just all about that. And strategy and like yeah. all kinds of stuff. I was like, I wish that this was something actually fruitful. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, that was while I was waiting for movie script money. It was a really fun time. It was before I got into fantasy, so I didn't understand at all. Yeah. And then once I got into fantasy, I'm like, oh, okay, I understand. Yeah. It, but it's not anywhere near as fun as crypto. Like, the, no. like once I got into crypto, like, a lot of things just got not interesting at all to me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, you you just suddenly wake up one day and realize that you got it. And, yeah. And, and it's like, oh, right, I did want that really bad, and I have it now. And you don't even think about it anymore. Yeah, you know? yeah. You just, you focus more on what you do want than what you're what you don't have. Exactly. I find that with everything in That's life, very true. when you are focusing so much on what you don't have, you continue to not have it. But when you start just focusing on like, well, what do I do want? What, how would that? What would that feel like? And you kind of get lost, like let yourself like dream a little bit and like mm-hmm. think about that and feel those feelings, like pretty consistently, like just kind of feel those feelings, even if you know, kind of act as if you have it already. It's some it's just sometimes it just magically just shows up like that. Wait, was that the title? Like, is there a magic? Yeah. Yeah. Well, magic that's spell. the magic spell. Yeah. The magic spell is that you act as if you already have it and feel those feelings anyway. You're because I was listening to a lot to Jerry and Esther Hicks, the or Abraham Hicks, whatever you want to call them. And they're really good. Highly recommend to everybody. But one thing that really stuck with me is that um, they that we tend to um, we tend to like want things, right? But when you really dissect why you want it like let's say i'm like i want a million dollars why well what why what would that what what does that give me you know like because having just a million pieces of paper that doesn't do anything like what are you doing with that yeah, million dollars? With what how does that change your life what and and really like oh well, if i had a million dollars i could buy bl- this with it this crazy car okay well why do you want that crazy car ultimately anything we ever want in life is because it makes us feel a certain way mm-hmm. it makes me feel happy it makes me feel supported it makes me feel fulfilled it makes me feel secure it makes me feel confident it makes me feel validated it makes me feel loved xyz but you can actually choose to feel that way anyway. Mm-hmm. So when you decide to just ha- choose the end feeling that you can have for free anyway, yeah, you can you s- a lot it of starts that. to just make uh, create more stuff in your life that makes you feel that way. Yeah. Which is pretty crazy. I found that to be true in life. And like it sounds very magical and woo-woo if it hadn't already happened to me. Yeah. If it hadn't Multiple already times. happened to me over and over and over and over again. Yep. If my entire adult life so far hadn't been exactly that. So I highly encourage you to do that. I, you don't lose anything. Because sometimes people are like, well, I feel so stupid. You know, acting as if I have a million dollars where I don't have a million dollars. But who cares? Like no one's watching you pretend you have a million dollars. This is you feeling things and letting yourself yourself live that those feelings without any judgment at all and just see what happens just Amen. see what happens also i wanted a dog for a long time but i was like that's unrealistic because we have like four cats it's not gonna happen <laughs> yeah. and now our neighbors oh, yeah. dogs are my dogs in a way <laughs> like and I, it's kind of a weird thing like nikki is very much like our cats all love nikki but for some reason dogs fucking love me yeah and like 
both of our neighbors have sent me videos of them saying like, where's Steve? Where's Steve? And the dog fucking gets up and starts running around the house and like <laughs> runs towards the door. And both of them, if they open their door and say, and say, go get Uncle Steve, the, the dog will fucking book it like all the <laughs> to way our to door. our front door. Yeah. Um, which just, uh, I just love it so yeah. much. Um, like two different so dogs. Cute. It's really cute. I yeah. love it. I fucking love it. So yeah, it's like, you know, you don't realize it until you get it. And then you're like, oh yeah, I did want that really bad. And also it's recognizing when it's been brought into your life. Exactly. You know, and going, and being that's thankful funny. for it. Because uh, I think people get caught up in the how it's going to happen too. Yeah. Like, and so they try to plan how it's going to happen. But like, when you just allow it, and then one day you're like, oh shit, yeah. it happened. Yeah. Like, I didn't even realize that it happened in that special way that unique way that you couldn't have planned it to happen yeah and i think that's what's so fun anyway that is the end of our time i'm glad you are here with us in the new year hopefully it's off to a great start i have my own things like uh, this new year every year i feel like a week into the new year i'm like i'm so behind and that's one thing i'm working on Behind on what? <laughs> like, what am I behind? Like, why? Amen. I, I'm like so weird about it. I've been waiting it. for you to shut the fuck up about that for a long time. I know. Well, it's a work <laughs> in progress continuously. Okay. But yeah, I constantly feel like, oh my God, we're nine days into the new year. Like, I haven't done, bl-. like, what am I behind? Exactly. Who's, who made the deadline? Exactly. <laughs> why did they, did they say you have to start on the 1st of January Thank with God. all of these things? I don't know. Thank God. It's something that we'll I'm see working on. how much on. you stick to that. We'll see. Yeah. Thank right. you for Thanks believing. For Thanks for believing in I me. Do. I, I sure, really I appreciate do. it. I am your biggest supporter. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right, guys. We love you guys. We'll see you. We'll see you next week. S- next week. Same bat channel, same bat time. Very nice. Thank you. Very pop culture relevant. Thank you. I think I said in the wrong order. Uh, if you want to support the show, check us out on patreon.com slash sticky, S-T-I-K-K-I. All right. We love you guys. Buy whatever we told you to buy. Bye. Bye.